Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on making a reg tester for the Air Max Catran. So in the near future we're going to be taking it apart, seeing what little bits and pieces we can make for it. So before we start messing around with things we need to know what the reg's set at. And the only real way to do that is make a reg tester. And that's what we're going to be showing here today. So we've got a piece of stock in the lathe at the moment, roughly cut to the total length of the two pieces added together. We're making a two piece design that sort of screws together with the reg captive in the middle. You'll see what I mean when we start making it. And the first operation is to turn the face and then get the OD down to a nominal 38mm size. Now I'm pretty much going to be copying the fittings on the Catran as that's all been pressure tested by Air Max and we know that's all safe. So this is going to be the back cap so this part will be threaded and the other part will have female threads in it. But these threads are going to be 35 by one5 pitch. So we turn the OD down to 35 and then make a nice undercut for the threads to end in. Once that's done, we come back with a 45 chamfer tool and make a soft start for the threads. This will just stop them bottoming out on the female piece. Once all the prep's done, we can start cutting the threads. So as I said before, these are going to be 1.5 mil pitch. So we've got all the lathes set up in the right gearing, and we're just cutting the threads now. Now we're using a full form cutter, and a full form cutter just means it cuts both the root and the crest, so the top and the bottoms of the threads. These are really easy to use, as you don't actually have to measure any part of the thread. You can do a few passes, and once the cutter's cutting both the top and the bottom of the threads, take a measurement, just a simple OD measurement with the calipers, and get it to final size. Once it's at final size, then your thread depth will be correct as well. So we're doing a 35mm thread, and we want a little bit of clearance on that, so we're shooting for 34.9mm. And since these threads are mirrored on the cylinder that's already fit to the gun, we can test fit the cylinder to make sure we've got the right depth for the threads and that everything screws together nicely. Once the threads are cut, we can drill out the centre to accept the base of the reg. So we're using an 8mm drill bit as a pilot drill, then using a boring bar and removing the rest of the material. Again, we're copying an Air Max part already, so I'm just taking it down to the same measurement that they have. They use a 0.5mm squeeze on the O-ring, so it's quite tight in there. And that's what I'm going to be using as well. So the target size is around 27mm and once we get that we need to put a chamfer on the inside so that the o-ring rides up nicely and doesn't get cut by the sharp edge. So the trick to these is to cut from the inside out. What this does is form the burr on the outside rather than the inside so the o-ring is not going to catch on nothing and you're not going to damage your o-rings as you're putting it in or out of the tool. And then we just remove the burr on the front of the tool there just with a file. Then finally test fit in the reg and it fits nice and snugly. Fairly tight in there but that's what we want. Next we're going to put a knurl on the outside. This is just for grip as the two parts will screw together and with the o-rings in there they might be a little tight. So a knurl on there just gives you a bit of extra grip. That's actually a homemade knurling tool there. I made that a couple of years ago now and it served me quite well. Final thing we need to do before we part it off is just drill out the centre there to 8.6 to accept a BSPP thread. As this is going to be the regulated air side, we need a gauge on this side so that we can tell what the reg pressure is. So we're tapping it 8 BSPP or British Standard Pipe Parallel. And that's the standard size for most gauges. And then finally, using a grooving tool, we're just putting a nice wide groove in there. We're not actually parting it off using the lathe. It's much quicker to chuck it in the bandsaw. So we'll get that cut off off camera. So the part we just made was the back cap or the regulated air side. This top part here will house the top of the regulator and the foster fitting so we can attach it to a whip. And the first operation is to make a little spigot that we can hold in the lathe and the mill nice and easily. So we're facing it down first, then turning and it 20 mil spigot on it and that'll go in a collar chuck nicely. Put some 45s on it, then again drill it out to 8th BSP and that'll allow us to screw in a foster fitting. Once that's done though, we can flip the part around in the lathe, holding it by the spigot and turn all the other features. So first we've got to face it to length, turn the OD to a nominal size, again 38mm, and since we put a nice big chamfer on the other side, we can turn right up to the jaws without actually hitting them. Next we've got to drill out a fair amount of material, so we're going through first with a 13mm drill bit, and then finishing it off with a 15mm drill. This holds only clearance, and just allows the top of the reg to fit up nicely within the tool itself. There's no O-rings or anything like that on this part, once that's drilled out, we can come back with a boring bar and take the rest of the material out for the second O-ring on the reg. And this O-ring is a bit larger than the other one, so we need to turn it to around 31mm to get a nice squeeze fit on the top O-ring of the reg. Once that's bored out though, we can test fit the reg. So I'm just putting the reg in backwards, 
making sure it fits and once we've got it to where we want it we can start turning the threads and since we're cutting a 35 by 1.5 mil pitch thread the tapping size is simply the thread size minus the pitch so in our case 35 minus 1.5 is 33.5 so that's what we've got to bore to and that's what we'll be cutting our threads into once it's bored out we've got a small undercut at the bottom there not a full undercut just a half one and that'll be the thread gutter we did relieve the male portion of the threads on the back cap we just made so this doesn't need to be a full undercut we can get away with just a half one and that will increase the strength of the part as well once that's done we'll put our chamfer on the leading edge of the o-ring bore and that's just using the cross slide on the lathe again working from the inside of the bore to out it's very very difficult to deburr anything actually inside the hole so doing it this way ensures that there'll be no burr on the inside edge. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of the threading. The SD card memory filled up and I didn't really notice it until I stopped threading. So, so unfortunately, we didn't get any footage of the threading. So once we've got it all set up like it is, we can screw the back cap back in and finish the back side of the back cap. And that just consists of facing the part, chamfering it and putting a little countersink on the BSPP thread that's in the end there. When it's running in the lathe you can actually see a small amount of axial run out of the part. That's just the clearance between the threads causing that. That's quite common when you thread pieces in the lathe. But luckily for this job it doesn't really matter. And the final thing in the lathe we need to do is knurl it. So as I said before these parts screw together. And that little bit of knurling just helps with a bit of grip. So that the parts don't get stuck together. And then it's just a case of drilling the breathe hole for the Belleville chamber. Nice and simple, just got it set up in the collet block there centered up and we're just drilling a one mil hole for the breathe hole and that breathe hole there just lines up with the one that's already on the rig and the final operation of the job is just to make a little bleed hole in the back cap so the back of this tool will be pressurized with reg pressure and we need a way to cycle the reg to make sure it's working correctly and also bleed off the reg pressure once we're done testing the regulator and the way we're going to do that is with a ball bearing and a grub screw so first drilling a 2 mil hole all the way through to the threads and this hole will break through into the gauge threads that we put in earlier and then next we're coming through with a 3.7 mil drill bit around 10 mil deep and then we're going to tap that M4 so we're using a form tap in this instance so the tapping size is a little different from normal but 3.7 we're using a form tap provides a really nice thread and what we'll be able to do with that is drop a 3 mil ball bearing down into the hole use a M4 grub screw on top of it to create a seal and then when we need a cycle to reg we can just loosen the ball bearing a little air will be able to escape through that hole and we'll be able to cycle the reg right then and here's it all ready to go together so we've got the two pieces here and the reg we've got a gauge fitted this is the Keller gauge nice super accurate gauge there but it is a BSP thread in there so you could fit just a standard gauge if you wanted to the cheapo digital ones will work quite well so time to put it together first we're going to put a generous dollop of silicon grease around the o-rings just to make sure they slide in and out of the assembly nice and easily we'll be putting the back in first it's a fairly snug fit like so and the top simply screws over the top once there's about a 2 or 3 mil gap at the end there, it does get a little stiffer as the O-ring rides up that ramp we put in earlier. But there we have it, ready to test. First thing we're going to do is make sure that the bleed screw is nice and locked off, which it is. And simply I've got a bottle by my side, I'm just going to connect the whip up to the foster fitting on the end there. Turn the gauge on. let it pressurise. So as you can see there, gauge is reading about 76, 77 bar. It's creeping a little at the moment, so we'll just cycle the reg a couple of times. And we do that by just quickly loosening and retightening the scrub screw. So you can see there, the reg seems to be working quite nicely, keeps settling at the same point each time. And there we have it. Our reg's set around the 78, 77 mark. And the marking on the valve in the gun was 80 or 80 bar. 
So the reg was probably set at 80 bar at the factory, then as we've shot it, it's bed in and settled a little lower. But there we have it. So we've got a reg tester now. We can play around with the reg, rebuild it, change all the O-rings if we need to, and then set it right back to where it needs to be. So to depressurize the system, what we're gonna do is close the valve and the bowl, bleed the air out the whip, And that time the regulator let go and blew the air straight out the back of the whip. If the regulator was locked we could just as easily undo the little screw here and that would bleed the back side of the regulator. So we'll disconnect the whip. Unscrew the two pieces. The regulator is still in this side. So we'll just screw a screw in the back there. Probably going to end up making myself a tool for this. And then just wiggle the reg out nice and gently. But there it is there. And then there's the end piece which is one of those cheapo digital gauges on the end there. In the test that we've done with these gauges they were in sort of a bar of the Keller gauge. So what I'm going to probably be doing is just keeping or sacrificing one of these gauges to be permanently affixed to this little reg tester. Right then. Hope that was interesting, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.